Now, uh, we have a special guest today, Matt, two special guests, Cueve McNamara and Brian Egan, ahead of uh, John the Baptist Community School's Senior Girls Munster Final against Loretto Clanmel next Wednesday, the 1st of March at half 11 in Sean Trice Park, Tipperary Town. Cueva, as captain, heading into you know a big game like this, how are you feeling? Um, well, there's always going to be a few nerves, I suppose, but um, we're looking forward to it and um, it's a great opportunity for us. Um, I know the last two years we got to a semi-final, so this year now um, we're after getting to the Munster final, so yeah, I can't wait, really. After getting so close the last couple of years, there must be a real buzz around the school. Yeah, no, there is, and there's huge support, and all the teachers are all wishing us best luck, and yeah, no, it's great that we're, we got there this year anyway. And I suppose in, in John the Baptist, there is a huge tradition of, of ladies football, obviously, in 2017, there, there were so many trophies won, and we'll get that on the line, but, you know, is there is there a pressure to succeed there, or is it more of a privilege to be going to school like that? Um, I suppose probably both, like, there's pressure, there's always going to be pressure, um, but, like, that was, I'd say, when I was in first year, I'd say that was when they won the all Ireland that year, so this is kind of the first time since then that we're back. So it's, there's always going to be a pressure, but um, yeah, no, it's a privilege to um, represent the school as well. And Brian, on to you as coach of the side, the same question really, you know, because you have achieved so much in recent years. What's it like training a, a squad in a school like that? Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I must say, like when Shane Stollery and Michelle Buckley were over a few years ago. And when they stepped down, um, soon as an opportunity to get to get involved with the girls, I kind of jumped at it because I knew how good they were. I knew there was serious potential with them, and um, I just knew that, I knew there was another monster final. I knew there was that potential of winning another monster final, and so yeah, I kind of got involved with them and uh, really looking forward to the final coming up. Like this group of girls is, they're just fantastic. They're an excellent bunch, and um, they're so clued in. Um, athletic, good footballers, and you couldn't but love being involved in them and looking forward to a final like this ahead of us. Yeah, we kind of spoke off air about your, your path to the final, but you had said, you know, getting to Munster was the aim. Now that you're there, how, how does that shift to actually going to win in the competition? At the start of the year, we set a very, very, what I thought was a very realistic aim of getting to a Munster final. And that was our goal from the start. And once we get to a Munster final, draw it. You can do nothing but go out to win it. You're not going to go out and lose it. Like. So that's our aim. Um, look, we don't know a whole lot about Clamell. We know they're a good team. We know how good Middleton were, and we know they beat them. So, yeah, we're, we're, we know we're capable of winning it. We know what's ahead of us. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You mentioned that Middleton game, and obviously a first-round defeat, but he, he bounced back to come out of the group and then won your respective quarters and semifinals. That he's, You look like a team that's, that's building and probably peaking towards the final. Yeah, our first game, we didn't have our 15 best players and tugged out even. Um, we didn't have best 15 on the field. And then we were actually very lucky with the ga- way the game fell. fell. We played well and colleague and had a good win against O's and Colossian and Skellig and a good win against O's. And then we went up another level in the quarterfinal. Thurless were, were very good. I think we had a few points to spare in the end, but it, it, it the game didn't reflect the scoreline. And, and same with Cashel. Cashel were all totally on top of us at half time when we played them but all of a sudden the girls decided they were going playing football and they were they put in a savage second half and put us into a final and i suppose the beauty of schools is that there, there's always something going on in, in the school and you obviously had midterm last week and there's the exams for you know the, the leaving certs and even some of the junior certs there's ty's and everything like what's it like preparing for a, a final with so many distractions crazy like You'd imagine that in a school where you have all your players there every day in, in an ideal world that it should be simple, but it's not. You, we'd mocks before we'd mocks before the midterm. We had um, musical this week. We have people getting drawn from pillar to post. The, the minors are going at the moment. We have seven in the Limerick minors at the moment. There's an awful lot to balance. And I suppose the biggest thing is not putting too much pressure on them. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this something that they want to do rather than something they have to do. And um, that's our goal, that we're trying to keep them happy and balance everything. And it's not an easy job, I can tell you. Yeah, Quiva, what's it like for you actually being in school and having to go to classes from nine to three and then training? Is it is it a nice distraction to have? 
yeah, no, I think it's a great distraction to be honest because you can be um, stuck in the books the whole time. Um, no, like, um, you just, it's a great um, release and it's just a break and yeah. Matt, I'll throw it over to you for a minute. Yeah, Brian, um, obviously you have a bit of history with Clan Mel. Um, if I think back to 2018 and 2019, there's a few scores to settle there. To be honest, that doesn't even come into our, our context. Like that, by right, there has been Clamell down through the years. There was an awful lot going on. But these guards didn't come up against that. Like they're, they're very, very focused on what they have to achieve, what they have to do to win, rather than worrying about what's going on, what happened four or five years ago. That's no relevance to them when they walk on the pitch. So, like, yeah, so the girls are, are very focused to, to their task rather than what happened four, year, four or five years ago, I'd say. We've, um, Brian mentioned there a while ago about the seven Limerick players in the in the um, John the Baptist squad. You're one of those seven. Um, a bit of a bit of a job juggling between commitments to college and uh, to the school and to the inter county team at this stage, especially seeing that the that, that the um, Munster Minor Championship is now a full round robin and it's it's very condensed week after week. Yeah, there's a lot of matches coming up and I know it probably won't be um, easy, but um, we just try and balance it and um, the trainings are kind of, we try and spread them out as much as we can and make sure we get enough time for rest and recovery and just trying to make sure that we don't do too much, but then it's kind of, it is hard, but I think we're, it's not going too bad anyway. We'll, we'll give a special mention Jack there. Jack referenced it there early on at the outset of the conversation, Quiva. Um, traveling down through the hallowed walls of the hallowed corridors of, of, of John the Baptist School and seeing all those photographs of successful teams, particularly the squad of 2017 and what they achieved. You know, it was, that was a historic achievement that it was the first Limerick team to win a school's A All Ireland since, since CBS, Limerick CBS had won the, the Cup in 1966. So it was a huge achievement. Does it pile a bit of pressure on? Or is it a motivating factor when you see these and look at them every day and you up and down changing this um, to drive on and, and emulate what they have done? Um, I'd say it is, yeah. I think um, that whole team, like they're all role models for us and like we just want to achieve what they've achieved um, in the past. But we don't really think about it too much. Like we're focused on our own game and we just, yeah, we're focused on ourselves mostly. And Brian, I think you're you're happening with something there before we finish up. I just wanted to say that uh, Quiva was talking about the minors. Look, we're very lucky that the minor management has been very good to us. And I was just going to give my mention there. Um, they have balanced. They've been very good to balance the the two together, and they definitely have helped us in a bit. Anyway, we yeah, I suppose it. look, it's all for the benefit of football around the area. And lastly, for me, Quiva, I suppose. The team is mainly made of players around the area, like St. Bridget, St. Elvis, Palace Green, you're on not gaining them. What's it like playing with girls that you know you're against when it's the club championship, but when you're when you're wearing the colours of John the Baptist that you're the one team? Yeah, no, it's great to get to play together um instead of always being um in, in opposition. Um and like you make great friends, like you'd be one week you'd be playing against each other and then you'd be off to train and then the next day um, together and just there's a great bond with all the girls and we all get on so well so I think it's great. Well please God you can come away with, with the Munster title that's the the 1st of March at half 11 on, in Sean Tracy Park Tipperary Town John the Baptist against Loretta Clonmel in the Senior Girls Munster Final the best wishes to you Quiva and your team and, and Brian and all the, the coaching involved the whole Limerick is behind you. Thanks very Thanks much. Very much.